for coming. It's my honor to speak here at the uh, National Hub Expo. My name is Rabbi Avraham Lutvin, and I am the kosher administrator for Kentucky Kosher. We all know about hemp. I expect that's why we're here. Um, hemp is a natural, beneficial, power food. It's high in antioxidants, it's high in protein, it's high in fiber. Um, it's a great source of minerals and vitamins. It's an absolutely wonderful, so a wonderful source of all kinds of natural gifts. And CBD, as we know, has been proven in many studies um, to help those who are struggling with a variety and array of different illnesses and troubles. But is it kosher? So, to begin, let's discuss what kosher really means. Kosher is a biblical term, it's in the Bible, and it refers to God's diet. It refers to something which is fit and able to be eaten in a beneficial way. Um, kosher laws are written in Leviticus and Deuteronomy in the Bible. They're expounded in the Code of Jewish Law and the Talmud. And throughout history, throughout the centuries, Jewish sages have expounded those laws and applied them to different situations as they grew. So now, how do we practically apply the laws that are in the Bible written 3,000 years ago to the modern extraction of hemp, for example, and or as we move more towards food products, adding oils, adding flavors, uh, putting into what gum you're putting into bottled water, putting into any of those items, what issues could come up and why should we be concerned? Why should we be concerned about some Bible issue written 3,000 years ago as we go to market CBD or various hemp products today? So here are some numbers I'm going to throw at you just to get you involved in what we're talking about. Over 12 million kosher consumers in the United States. Over 40 billion, with a B, dollars in annual kosher sales. 40% of all kosher products are currently kosher in the supermarket, and that means if you go home and you look in your cabinets, there'll be a little mark, either a Kentucky kosher mark, or a Circle U mark, or a Circle K mark, or one of the kosher symbols saying that product is kosher. Try this at home, you won't get hurt, it's all fine. 21% of Americans look to a kosher symbol as an added sign of health, purity, cleanliness, or other beneficial reason to shop kosher. So there's clear evidence that a kosher symbol will boost sales, usually get better positioning in a market, and usually get about 20% of a boost compared to a non-kosher product of the same exact level and quality. Getting kosher certification is something that most businesses can do to try to boost their sales and get to a, a, a deeper market. And especially with hemp that has so many beneficial sides to it, it enables you to get to a wider market and enables your product to get to more people who can benefit from the product. Adding a kosher designation, also specifically in the world of hemp, sends that message that it's kosher, that it's quality, that you're not going to get high, you're not going to get sick, you're not doing something evil or wrong, and just seems to lend an air of appropriateness to these products. So, in addition to Jewish people, Muslim people, Seventh-day Adventists, people who are lactose intolerant, people who have other specific dietary needs, numerous consumers just look to kosher as a symbol of purity, health, and other benefits. Many consider the kosher symbol the good housekeeping symbol of the 21st century. Kentucky Kosher, the organization that I belong in, um, we've actually gathered a team of rabbis and um, other knowledgeable staff. We currently provide supervision and certification throughout the country as well as in nine other countries on five continents. 
We're especially excited about hemp because of its connection to Kentucky. As you know, hemp was grown here back in the 1700s, uh, on through the early 1900s when it became outlawed. Uh, but now, especially with the passing of the Farm Bill just a few months ago, um, now that hemp is off that controlled substance list, there's no reason why hemp should not be a leader in Kentucky produce. And with the steps that the Department of Agriculture has done here recently, 42,000 acres designated towards hemp, all things are set for indeed hemp to become a major player in the future. Let me stop throwing out some general information. Is there any questions about kosher or any questions about anything I've mentioned so far? Good morning, Rabbi. I understand uh, from the seminar we're learning a lot about from soil to oil. So from the initial planting all the way to the final production and to the consumer, at what point does rabbinical standards require uh, checking the, the crops and everything at the time of planting, harvesting, producing it, bottling? So that's an excellent question. Where does kosher kick in? Let's work the other way. I had a person call me um, about a week ago. They're a bottler in California. They're doing infused CBD in water. It would seem to be the simplest process there is. We ran into a major problem and actually could not certify them as of yet. We hope to do so soon, but as of yet, because the bottler is running other things in his line. So now, even though the process is kosher, the oils are kosher, the water-soluble product is kosher, the water is kosher, but down the line there's a problem with the bottler making other things and not cleansing or neutralizing his machinery in a kosher-approved manner. So we could not approve that product as of yet as kosher. So the simple answer is, it should all be kosher, it should be easy. But the kosher standards and requirements are such that we're required to know that everything along the line is kosher. In general, when you grow the process will be kosher, and even when you turn it into an isolate will be kosher, the natural process, the CO2, it's all step-by-step step in line with kosher standards. The bigger issue will be when you apply this to a kosher food or when you put in a flavor um, or make it available for baking or for cooking or for whatever else you put it into. You mentioned CO2 extraction being kosher. Is the ethanol extraction kosher? Yes, the ethanol system of extraction is also kosher. Ethanol is a chemical which is in line with kosher product. I hesitate to say that all CO2 or all ethanol uh, extractions are kosher, but they all should be kosher. They all should be in line with kosher process, and they should all, all be easily applicable to kosher. The quick answer is yes, but I just hesitate saying all extractions are kosher without actually seeing them or being aware of the detail in a particular manufacturing facility. Although I've read the Bible, I'm definitely not an expert. How can I figure out all the kosher laws so that my company can be in compliance with kosher? Rabbi at kykosher.com. <laughs> yes, the problem is um, that the biblical terminology um, that you find in Leviticus is going to be referring to animals that chew their cud and have split hooves, uh, fish that have uh, fins and scales, uh, not mixing milk and meat, and it's very hard for the layperson to derive the kosher laws from those sentences. Sages have done that over thousands of, year, or over thousands of years, uh, the compiling of that information, which is scary to a, to a layperson, I get that. Um, is where organizations such as my own comes in. Um, we're a relatively, well, I'd call us mid-size uh, kosher certifier, uh, very quick response time. We're small enough to deal directly. Uh, we're based in Kentucky. Um, and our goal is to partner with people trying to make this available. We're a nonprofit, so we're not here to try to make a lot of money. We're trying to bring hemp to the, to the kosher world. Um, and it's our goal to bring the benefits of hemp to a wider audience. So I think we dovetail very well with people. And if there's questions, we're happy to answer questions at any time. There's no charge for questions. We're happy to guide you along until you're ready to um, actually make the step of going kosher. 
and we'll make that as painless and as easy as possible. We kind of see ourselves as on a team uh, with the grower, with the manufacturer, with the consumer. Uh, and we're just trying to help move that along in the right direction. That's an excellent question. Any other questions? If a producer wanted to get the halal status, but he also wants to market to other religions such as Islam for the halal status, is there a conflict of having like a halal symbol if there is such a thing along with the uh, kosher status on the same package? It's an excellent question. Um, very often we will find people have a vegan status, a halal status, a kosher status, um, a dairy-free status, an egg-free status, uh, and many other symbols on the same product. Um, sometimes I'll even have more than one kosher status because they're trying to sell in a specific market that has specific needs. Um, so no, there's no conflict. And it's in fact much easier to get halal when it's a kosher product. Rabbi, I'm in Texas. If I needed uh, rabbinical advice on how to be kosher for my products in Texas, would you be in the point of contact? Or would you be able to refer me to someone in Houston, Texas? The quick answer is yes, I'd be happy to help. Uh, probably it would be an annual visit from here, and we'd hire one of our local rabbis uh, in the Houston area to do the regular checking and to guide you through the process. Uh, we're happy to help anyone across the country or literally in most places around the world uh, where we have, we currently have 4,000 rabbis uh, on our list of approved uh, providers and that pretty much covers the globe. So yeah, Houston's easy uh, and it's just a shot away. So happy to help. Let's talk after the uh, program.